just can't get over it, Aang said miserably. There's not a single thing that's the same. I don't know about that, Tio argued, and it took everything Zuko had not to instinctively bristle at the dismissal. He was trying to react less, be less obvious. This wasn't about him, his guilt, the festering treasonous thoughts that were poisoning him against his nation. This was about Aang and his desire for the culture that the monks who once held it could no longer protect. Zuko had never been good at pushing things down, hiding his emotions. It was one of his greatest failures in the Fire Nation court and his family. When he'd been in the cave, it just hadn't seemed worth it. But for now, he wouldn't try and push the part of him that was screaming and anger and guilt and mourning deep inside so he could focus on the matter at hand. He had to be careful, not to let it up too quickly. Else Aang's earlier blow-up would look like a child's tantrum in comparison to the sticky and welled mess of emotions stirring in Zuko's chest and attempting to escape. Besides, he accepted that Tio seemed to be trying to help. He wasn't bad, better than the last Earth Kingdom teenager refugee hunt by the Fire Nation that Zuko had met. Wait, was that why he was so freaked out? If so, then he needed to cut that out. Tio wasn't anything like Jet. Not in looks, temperament, personality, or threat level. It was irrational for Zuko to be this paranoid, and he would put a stop to it. He wasn't some coward. There was no reason for his heart to be beating this fast, and why was this cavern so long? And why were the walls this dark? He thought the air nomads liked open spaces and bright colors, and where was the Earth Kingdom refugee taking them, and why was it so cold, and... Zuko jumped back with a startled yelp as something flashed before his eyes. Hands half pulling his blades out before Aang's sheepish expression registered, and he realized that the airbender had let a gliding hermit crab go in his direction. Zuko, are you okay? Aang asked, and the firebender realized he was doing a horrible job and not making things be about him. I'm fine. Lost in thought. Sorry, he grunted, and Katara and Aang shared a look. I'm fine. He repeated, louder. Katara looked at him in concern. Are you sure? I said I'm fine! The teen repeated again. Tio wheeled back and forth anxiously, a subconscious fidget. We are almost there. I want to show Aang the one other place in this temple that hadn't been changed at all. But if we need to come back later... Zuko curled his lips in a snarl, but Katara tactfully stepped between the two teen boys. Thanks for the offer, Tio, but I think we should just keep going. Yeah, Aang agreed. Zuko's really stubborn. After the third I'm fine, you can't make him go back, even if it's a really, really bad idea. That's not true, Zuko snarled. You try to go fishing with Sokka after making that poison tea, Aang said. I thought it was a different flower. Uncle said it made good tea. You threw up in the pond and scared the fish away. That was a three I'm fine day. Zuko sputtered, remembering the incident. Admittedly, he had not been fine that day, but this was different. He should be able to get over this. He would get over this. Shut up, he finally said, at a loss for a better comeback. Tio laughed. You know, I can't tell if I should find you intimidating or not, he said with frank honesty. You seem pretty scary, but then you guys start talking and... Katara laughed, high and bright despite spending weeks not trusting him. That's Zuko in a nutshell. Even Aang was starting to smile just a bit. Yeah, he looks and sounds all danger, danger, but... I am dangerous, Zuko protested. Not to us, Katara disagreed sweetly. And it was ridiculous. He was Fire Nation. He was a firebender. He was a sword master. He was exactly the kind of person who should be sending everyone here running for the hills. He was of the people that killed all of Aang's people, decimated Katara's tribe and benders, and displaced and disabled Tio. This was ridiculous. At least he wasn't scared anymore. Whatever, he mumbled, stalking down the hall. Now the Earth Kingdom team was at his back. This was not better. Aang's smile dropped as the rest of them followed Zuko down the dark tunnel. He wished he could have comforted the older team, promised him that they would be there soon, but he couldn't. 
He visited this place dozens of times, learning for the Northern Masters and playing with the other kids. He would have sworn he knew this place out of the back of his hand. But like everything else, that was before. Now he had no clue where he was. Not only that the dark, cluttered halls were almost impossible out of place in the air temple. He didn't remember this hall, but he knew that it would have once been painted white or filled with bright colors and tapestries. Small holes to act as windows would have been scattered every few feet. The natural light that had once would have let in were now plugged by pipes settling in the former holes. He never remembered hating a place he had hoped wouldn't feel like home. No, not hate. Hate is bad. It clogs a soul. He would not let his people's teaching die as their temple had. He would preserve it, even if he was the only one who could. He took in a deep breath as he walked, attempting to force out the hate, the anger. It wasn't easy. He would need some long meditation first, but just remembering that there was more to his people than a couple buildings was helpful. The room at the end of the hall was much more familiar, with large arched windows, natural light, and white walls with decorated rugs. At the end of the hall was a door even more familiar. Abruptly, Aang realized why he hadn't recognized much of the path. It wasn't just because of how much had changed. This area had been restricted to masters only, and he hadn't come to the temple after receiving his arrows. A bubble of excitement started in the back of his mind, and Aang was quick to bring it forward, to regain any cheer he could as he looked around the vaulted hallway in an area he had never before seen, but it was more familiar to him than the rest of the temple combined. Tio led them up to a familiar-looking door, carved in a huge relief. Hey, it's just like the one at the other temple, Katara said excitedly. Tio gently touched the door. Only an airbender can open it, so inside is completely untouched. Just the way the monks left it, he grinned at Aang. I've always wondered what it's like in there. The bubbling of joy that Aang had been trying to hold slipped out of his fingers at the thought of revealing the last of the temple's purity, its final pristine secret. Aang? Katara asked softly as a smile fell. The boy found he couldn't look at them and turned away. Zuko was still standing behind him, but Aang was quick to avert his gaze. I'm sorry. This is the last part of the temple that's the same as it was. I want it to stay that way, Aang said, refusing to open the door. Though he still didn't look at anyone, he would particularly feel the glare Zuko leveled at Tio over his shoulder. Aang didn't think the glare was really necessary, as the Earth Kingdom boy quickly backed down and led them back through the dark tunnel attempting to pull back some of the interest from earlier. Aang hummed. I wondered if all the temples had doors like that, and I just wasn't allowed in those sections. I'm surprised you didn't sneak into them, Katara said quickly, joining his attempt to lighten the mood. Aang's heart swooped at her kind tone and gaze. He found a bit of his smile returning. Why would I bother sneaking into some old hallways? There's plenty of fun stuff to do in the rest of the temple. Katara laughed, and Aang felt some of the weight dragging him down lift at the sound. I think the shrine of Avatar Roku at Crescent Island was something similar, but with firebending, obviously, Zuko added. I wonder if there was a Water Tribe or Earth Kingdom door that worked the same way. He glanced at Katara, as if to see if she knew the answer, but the girl simply shrugged. I think if I wanted to keep something secret from any non-waterbenders, I would just put up an ice wall or put it in a glacier. Yeah, and the Earthbenders probably just put up rock walls, Aang added. Zuko was blushing, which wasn't good. He hadn't wanted to embarrass his friend. Quick change of topic. But the one at Avatar Roku Shrine was so cool. You've seen it? Yeah, uh, Avatar Roku had a message for me. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, it was weird. I'd never met with a past life before. The room was really secure, too. We tried to trick it with explosions, but it didn't work. We're lucky Sokka thought of a plan to trick the sages into opening it for us. Zuko hummed. It's ironic, because you probably didn't have to trick them at all. It's the sages' duty to help the Avatar. If they knew you were there, they would have opened the doors for you. Oops, abort, abort. Zuko was really sad when they talked about when the Fire Nation was mean. They needed a new topic. Have we showed Zuko the marble trick yet? Well, one of them tried to help us, Katara confessed. But the rest had forsaken their vows and pledged their loyalty to the Fire Lord. 
Zuko said, his voice that flat, motionless bass line that Aang thought was worse than anger. Right, of course. Tia slowed and was watching them carefully, concern in his dark eyes. You seem to know a lot about Fire Nation shrines, he said. He accused. Zuko scowled, golden eye squinting. I don't want to talk about it. Zuko's hands tight. Tio's hands tightened on his wheels. Face screwed up in concern as he started connecting the dots. Uh oh. Hey, Tio, look at this. Aang called from the wind, shaping it and moving it in a mini tornado in his hands. Playful and consistent enough to twirl a pair of marbles in a halo. The boy smiled. Cool. I bet there was a ton of tricks that you urbans used to know. Aang smiled back. As fun as it would have been to show off the tricks, also went to remind the other boy that he was the Avatar and that his choice and companions could be trusted. Yeah, speaking of airbending, can you show me those gliders again? i never seen anything like them. Sure. Tio chatted with Katara as he and another refugee kid worked to set up a glider so they would work with her size. Aang smiled, a bit of joy bubbling again at the thought of sharing the pure elation of flight with a friend who was so dear to him. Speaking of his friends, the boy turned to where Zook was standing at the edge of the platform, glaring at the sky and clouds below. Aang hesitantly moved toward the other boy, Zuko. He seemed to be the only one who seemed to get it. Sokka had been too excited for the inventions to really be thinking, and this was all normal for Tio. But even Katara was just sad that he was upset. She wasn't mad about the temple. Just that it made him sad. Zuko, though, he looked at the pipes and the destruction with as much disgust as Aang. He got it. Aang wished that helped. Thank you, by the way, for... Is this what it used to look like? Outside the temple? Pouting, but knowing enough about Zuko to know that the interruption was intentional, Aang considered the question. Well, it's pretty obvious to me that you're gliding and not airbending, but other than that, it's pretty similar. They're actually pretty good at it. The pair were distracted when Momo ran past, leaping from tree to tree along with the wild lemurs. The entire pack gliding between the branches and airbender hummed. I wonder if they learned to glide from the lemurs, like how we learned to airbend from the bisons. You learned from the bisons? Yep, that's how Appa flies. Sometimes I still think I learned new tricks from him. It's really cool to be close to visual masters, you know? Aang smiled, but Zuko's scowl had only deepened. Our original masters were the dragons. Some of the best firebenders in history were said to have dragon companions. Avatar Roku had a dragon. He was the one who led me to the temple. Maybe we should see if we can find one. That way Appa could have a flying friend. The Ting looked to the side. We can't. They're extinct now. What? That's impossible. They were all over. Before. Everything was different before. Fire Lord Azulon made it a sport to hunt dragons. Said it was a sign of a masterful firebender to deal with the old masters at their own game. The last one was killed years ago. I always... I always thought it was stupid. Riding a dragon for one moment would be better than a lifetime of glory and acclimate for killing one. That was... that was horrible. How could they have done something like that? Perhaps it shouldn't be such a shock whom they had done so much to the rest of the world, but to go against their own masters? It was a betrayal. As the horror process, something Zuko said stuck out to the airbender. Riding a dragon for one moment might be better than a lifetime of glory. Suddenly the teen's expression, the way he watched the swooping gliders, took on a whole new meaning. He wasn't brooding, it was envy. You know, if you asked, they would probably let you try out a glider. There's a whole pile over there. Zuko was silent for a moment. They wouldn't if they knew who I really was. Aang felt compassion burst in his chest, somehow bursting through his yuckiness. Zuko had to think a lot about the bad things the Fire Nation had done today. 
He never seemed to realize that he was not just the sins of his nation. Maybe they wouldn't if they knew you were a firebender, but if they really knew you, who you are, they'd be honored. We know you. He gestured at Katara, who was giving him a nervous look as she walked toward the edge with her glider. And we think you should try. Really? Of course. Now go ask for our glider. I'm going to give Katara some pointers. T was giving her guidance so as he came up. The wind will carry you. It supports something inside you, something even lighter than air. And that sometimes takes over when you fly. The girl bit her nip nervously. I've changed my mind. I think I was born without that something. Tio laughed. <laughs> That's impossible. Everyone has it. And this, this was the first truly familiar thing that Aang had heard of since coming to the temple. Spirit. The other boy blinked. What? Spirit. That's the something you're talking about. Yeah, I suppose. Suddenly a blur of dark rushed past as Zuko ran past the group, not hesitating for a moment, before leaping off the edge. The firebender whooped as the wind caught his glider and Aang grinned. See? Zuko has spirit. Are you ready, Katara? No, she said and jumped. Zuko laughed joyously, uproariously. He laughed as he hadn't since he was a child. He wasn't even sure he laughed like this back then, even with his mother presence. The walls of the palace were not made for playing. Nothing had ever felt like this. He cut through the air with ease, swooping and diving. The glider caught the currents as the wind blew past his face. He could sense the artificial warm air currents hitting them as the perfect time to send him higher and faster. Aang swooped past him. You're pretty good at this, Zuko. This feels amazing. No wonder you're happy all the time. You get to do this whenever you want. That's pretty awesome, Aang agreed. Just make sure you keep your mouth closed so you don't swallow a bug. Oh, I should go warn Guitar about that. Aang looked back to a figure in blue, gently gliding far behind him. Okay, yeah, let me just... He didn't have as much control as Aang, but being able to sense the hot currents made the act of gliding more instinctual than it all must have been otherwise, so he was able to join to catch the tail end of the conversation. Even though Tio's not an airbender, he really does have the spirit of one. Zuko shrugged. He's all right. Aang grinned, looking at Zuko. The younger boy's gray eyes were locked on the broad grin that was refusing to leave the teen's face. I've been thinking. I'm going to let him see what's in the room. I like Tio. I think he would keep it safe if he knew it was important. The boy flew away, leaving the tar and Zuko slowly floating through the air. Uh, the waterbender asked nervously. How do we land these things? Tio was practically vibrating with excitement. Aang seemed nervous, but not upset. Katara was glad that Aang's usual temper was resuming. Zuko was just happy to get out of the hallway. I can't believe I'm finally going to see what's inside. The Earth Kingdom boy enthused. Aang didn't answer. Instead, taking a deep breath as he carefully air bent into the air funnels in the door. Zuko leaned forward with interest as the three wooden dolls moved with the force of the air. Then the doors opened. Zuko was going to be sick. It was terrible. It was sickening. It was horrible. It was blood red and cold dark still. It looked just like home. <laughs>